السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ഷറുഹമ്മദുഹു <tik> يا الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان لكم رقيبا يا الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل احسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدوثاتها وكل ما في الاسلام بدع وكلوا بذات الدلاله وكلوا دلاله في النار our praise due to allah we praise him and we told him we send the finest of salutations on muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam really most sure sort of speech is the book of allah to our taala and finest kindness that of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay as what follows today my dear brothers and sisters man for today's khutbah the topic will be revolving around what the mashab Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would always state in his khutbah the haja the qulu qawlan sadida that we should speak words that are directed towards the truth and that is revolving around where the mashab Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has stated in regards to the importance of istiqama istiqama in islam and what is istiqama and this word 
has been found in the Quran in numerous places and it's also been found in the Sunnah of the Prophet I want to speak about one specific hadith which has been found in the Sunan of Abu Dawood and of the Sahih Imam Muslim and it's from the Juwayim al-Kalim the concise speech of the Prophet Sallallahu where he Sallallahu has stated about himself that he was given Juwayim al-Kalim and Utitu al rub and was given the fear the fear in the hearts of the disbelievers for the distance of over 40 days journey and the Meshav Allah Sallallahu was approached by a man and he asked him his name was Sufyan bin Abdullah. That he came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, teach me something, a word in Islam that I will not have to ask anyone else after you." The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he said, "Qul, amantu billah fastaqim, O Qamaqa Sallallahu Say that I believe in Allah and then be an upright individual, a stand-up individual, for stuckim. from the linguistic aspect of this word, we can see that in this day and age, in this time that we're living in, where we see that the rates of suicide are at an all-time high, drug use, depression, and the list goes on and on and on and on. That we are in need of istiqama. The whole world is in need of istiqama. What this means is that as believers, we don't need to look outside of our deen. We don't need to look outside of our iman to find istiqama. When we say we believe in Allah, what does it mean to us as an individual? We have to understand that we are a part of the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we say that, people are confused today. People are lacking in self-confidence and self-worth. So they are lacking in what? Istiqama. Because they don't understand what it means to be an individual. People feel strong in groups. As they say, they're strength in numbers. But we know that the jama'ah, the meaning of the jama'ah, is the person who's on the truth. Allah Mufrad, even if they're alone. So we understand that istiqama, it means that we are an upright individual, that we are a straightforward person, that when we walk, we walk in a proper direction. When we walk, we put our feet, we plant our feet in the correct direction. When we speak, as the Messenger of Allah Wasallam would always say, Oh, you believe. Whosoever believes in Allah and His last messenger has indeed achieved a firm handhold. He said, speak a straightforward word. If we want to achieve this success, then we should speak a word that is directed towards the truth. So this is the starting point of our istiqama, that we're not crooked in our speech. We speak straightforward. We speak words that have meaning and value that are directed towards the truth. We don't speak in a crooked manner. This is the first thing, that what's in our heart will coincide with what comes out of our mouths. So this concept of istiqama is also in line linguistically with Surat Al-Mustaqim. Where we ask Allah, those of us who are regular in our salat, إِهْدِنَا Surat Al-Mustaqim. We ask Allah, istiqama, to Allah guide us to the straight path. Surat Al-Ladhin An'amta Alayhim غَيْرَ مَغْدُوبِ عَلَيْمُ وَلَضَالِينَ Amin. Al-Ayah. The, the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed. An'amta Alayhim. من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين حس أولئك رفيقة الآية from the prophets the messengers the truthful and the shuhada those martyrs and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned in Surah Hud 
فاستقيم كما أمرت ومن تاب معك ولا تدغو إنه بما تعمل بصير الله said be straight as Allah has ordered us to be straight and those who are with you those who want to be straight with you be with those who are straight who want to be straight with you that means we don't follow we don't follow popular trends or opinion we want to be straight Allah said be straight and those who want to be straight the ba'amak and do not follow those people of vain desires because Allah is ever watchful over us so with that said what are some of the indicators? What are some of the indications that we are people of istiqama? For starters, we must, we must stop following popular trends and opinions. What does that mean? That we, if we are striving really and truly to be people of istiqama, then we will not always try to fit in to every situation. People of istiqama, we don't always try to be liked or appreciated for our presence. La. If we want to be a person of istiqama, it also connotates that we are people who always speak the truth. We are truthful people in word and deed and in intention. People are going to say that this is not what we meant by what we said, but we don't care what people think or feel about what we say. We don't have any hidden agendas behind what we say. As people of istiqama, what we say, we meant what we said. This is what is the meaning of istiqama. And also, on the other side, the truth can be for us or against us. People of istiqama, we don't have to try and prove that we're wrong and strong. If we made a mistake, alhamdulillah, we are only human. If and when we make mistakes, because we will make mistakes. As the Messenger of Allah has stated, كل بني عند خطاعون وخير خطاعين التوابين أقم خاص الله السلام that all of the sons and daughters of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of those who make a mistake are those who make Tawba. And the first starting point of Tawba is Nadim. And Nadim with Tawba, as the Messenger of Allah has stated. said. That feeling regret about our mistake. We don't be quiet and trying to act as if we didn't make a mistake. We don't be quiet to try and instill fear into the person who is pointing out our mistake. La. And let them with Tawbah. We feel regret. Whether we, whether we ask or we say we're apologetic or we thank the person, we have to regret for our mistake. Another aspect, or one of the indica- another one of the indications of istiqama is that we are people who are the first to pay our debts. We don't hesitate when it comes to repaying a debt. The being a person of istiqama is that we don't hold grudges for long. Things are going to happen. Life goes on. We're going to get into situations that we are rubbed the wrong way or we might rub a person the wrong way. But we don't hold a grudge for too long. A person of istiqama, we have to let go. We must be in the habit of letting go. Now, alhamdulillah, I mean, we don't have to make a smoke signal. We can send a text. We can pick up a phone and call. We don't have to look for, even if everybody has a cell phone. Send a message. Squash it. We hold grudges. And that is another topic in and of itself. To be people of istiqama. It means that we have to put Allah first. When it's time for the salah, when it's time for prayer, when we have the choice to finish our task or to pray. This should never be a choice. When it's time for prayer, we pray. We pray first. If we're stuck in traffic, we wait till we come to an appropriate place and we pray. The first chance we get, we pray. We have to establish the prayer. Whenever we have a chance to pray, we pray. We don't put off the prayer. This is a bad indication that we put off the prayer because we say that, Inshallah, we'll pray later. Or Inshallah, I'll make up my prayer later, at a later. This is not a good indication. This is not an indication that the person is a person of istiqama. So, with that said, 
when we look at ourselves as an ummah, right now, we make up approximately 1.8 billion people on the planet Earth, close to 25% of the Earth's population. Realistically speaking, truthful speaking, how many of us pray regularly? This is the first after the, after the Shahada time, the first pillar of the proof that proving that we are a Muslim is our prayer. After our Shahada, making that declaration of faith, which the majority of us, of that 1.8 billion Muslims, are born Muslim. So they didn't have to come into Islam. They were born in Islam. So they didn't have to say the Shahada. So what is the science that we are Muslim? Out of this 1.8 billion Muslims, how many of us pray? Let's be honest for a moment. When it comes to the prayer, we're lacking in this aspect. Believing and feeling that we are real Muslim and a solid bedrock Muslim. But yet, the first thing that will be asked about Yom al Qiyamah is our salah. And it's of little or no significance to us. We have to be honest. This is the first characteristic of the people of Istiqama. There's a hadith in Sahih of Imam Muslim that Jabir reported that the Prophet has said, Inna bayna rajab wa bayna shurk wa kufr tarak salah. That between a man and kufr and shirk, disbelief and associating partners with Allah is them leaving off the prayer. Considering the prayer as little of little or no significance. And Allah says in Surah Maryam, verse number 59 to 60. Allah says that in the later generations, there will be generations of people, offspring, that will leave after prayer. They will follow their desires and they will leave the prayer. They will leave the prayer and they will follow what? Their desire. So what? Allah will lead them to Ghiyya, meaning to the hellfire. Except for those who makes repentance, makes repentance, amen, believes, and amna salihan, and does good deeds. Those who, after realizing by whatever means that they have made a mistake for neglecting the prayer, putting it off for whatever reason, that they believe, they rectify. Then Allah will change their bad deeds into good deeds. So, my dear Basalam Niman, having istiqama, it means that we make a conscious effort. We make a conscious decision to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by Atab al Rasul. And how are we going to follow the measure of Allah is by following his breath. We have the ahadith, we have the tafasir, we have explanation. In the Quran, we have the Sunnah. Allah Wajal He told us that in His book, Ya Lidina Aminu, in Tan Surah Allah Yan Surakum, we have a bit of Oh, you believe, if you assist Allah, then Allah will help you and He will make your feet firm. We want to be people of istiqamah. So we cannot just say that we are people of belief without showing that we believe. To be a person of istiqamah uprightness, steadfastness, a person who walks straight, it will only come about by us practicing the deen in the method and mode of the Sahabi May Allah be pleased with them. Why and how is this going to come about? Is that when we are not afraid to show and prove our Islam. So many of us are afraid to pray at the workplace. We say we'll pray later. Why, don't, why can't you pray at work? What is the problem? They're quiet. They're silent. So we understand what that silence means. That they're searching for a reason why they're disobeying Allah. They're disobeying the first commandment after we say we believe. No one is forcing us. There is no compulsion in the deen of Islam. So why are we not praying? No one forces us to become a Muslim. 
because the majority of us have been born into Islam. But why are we not praying? Did the boss say that we can't pray? Who's our boss? Who should we obey? Who do we put first? We put Allah and His Rasul This is the first thing that we're going to be asked about Yom al is our salah, our prayer. If it is correct and in order, we have succeeded and we have passed. Then everything else will be that would accordingly. Allah has given us many examples in His book. And the Prophet ﷺ has told us many things in the Sunnah. I want us to bring us our attention to one very extremely important detail. What Allah Wajal tells us that our example that we follow in this life to lead us to the next, everything is not going to end here. Everything we do here should help us to bring us to the next life. Allah Wajal, He explains to us that the people we should follow are Ashab Rasul. He had told us in Surah Tawbah regarding the three righteous generations, Quruna Mafadala, Wasabikun and Awalun, Milamahajiru and Ansar, Wanadina Tabahum Bihsan, Rodilah Anhum, Raduan, Wadalahum Jannat and Tajri Matahil and Har, Khalidina Fiha Abadan, Vadak al Fawzal Adim, Al Ayah. Allah was just speaking about the first, foremost in faith. Sabiqun and Awalun, the foremost in faith and commitment from the Muhajirin wal Ansar. So we don't have any preconceived notions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the Muhajirin wal Ansar. So we don't think there's no room for misconceptions that these are the ones who Allah is speaking about. And then those who follow them with ihsan in righteousness and goodness. These are the ones who Allah is speaking about. The first people who embraced the faith, Fisarat al Usra, in the time of difficult, extreme difficulty, they embraced faith. And they were persecuted for their faith. And there's a hadith in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari in the chapter called Kitab al Riqaq, the chapter of the softening of hearts, and the third of Abdullah ibn Umar. That the Prophet has said, Khaira Kurun Kurni. The best of generations, meaning a hundred years, the best generation is my generation. And those who came after them, and those who came after them. So the first 300 years is the best golden era of Islam. So to be a Muslim of Istiqama, not just a Muslim who said, I was a born Muslim. My name is a Muslim name. I came from a Muslim father. My grandfather was Muslim. La. Allah doesn't ask you about you. Allah doesn't ask me about me. What kind of Muslim was I? He's not going to ask me about my father and my grandfather. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim khalis. I'm a pure Muslim. What makes you so pure? Because you came from a Muslim family? Because your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather was Muslim? That makes you a better Muslim than someone who just became Muslim today? No. Allah will ask us about ourselves individually. We will stand up in front of Allah Barefoot, naked, uncircumcised, we will be asked individually about ourselves. The Quran of Fadullah, who embraced Islam in the most difficult period of Islam. And when the Ansar, the helpers of the Muhajirin, those who made Hijrah from Mecca to Medina, they would tell them the stories of how life was in those difficult times in Mecca. When they, for a year or in a year and a half or two, had to eat the dry leaves of a tree. And when they would pass out bowl, it would be green like animal dung. They said they would never, ever, they would never give up that life for what they're living now, of ease. That was the best time of their life. Because they know that they were struggling for the sake of Allah. And they love that. To be a, to be a Muslim in these days, to be a Muslim of Istiqamah. We don't have to give any pledges of allegiance. What type of Muslim are we when we don't want to see any struggle in our lives? When we don't see any struggle in our lives whatsoever? Right now, the majority of us are Muslims by name. Ma'asif Shadid. By, by, by name. By title. By region. So where are we in the estimation of the Sahaba Ikram al-Ma'admin? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. Where are we in that estimation? We are Muslims now that forward messages 
for good talks, for ayats and hadith. But where are we in regards to those messages? Where are we in regards to those ayat and ahadith? Are we following that? Why did you send it to me? Are you practicing that? Are you doing that? Are you calling to that which you do? Why do you say that which you do not do? Allah would ask. Most distasteful is that in the eyes of Allah that we say that which we do not do. So when Allah has spoken about Asabiqin al Awalin, Mulu Mahajir will answer. When Allah was speaking about those individuals, Allah is specifically speaking about the very first people who gave the bear, the pledge of allegiance to the Prophet Islam, called the bear the Ridwan. They gave the pledge of allegiance underneath that tree, just on the outskirts of Mecca, in the state of extreme fear and apprehension for their lives. Can you imagine? They had to leave in secrecy in the middle of the night, and they gave the bear the pledge of allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu And there's a narration which was in the Sahih Imam Bukhari that Salam bin Awqa. He said, I gave the pledge of allegiance to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam under that tree. Yazid asked him at that time, to what? Because they had nothing. They were person, they had nothing. To what did you pledge to the Prophet? He said, I gave the pledge, I stretched up my hand and gave the pledge of allegiance to the Prophet to die. Muslim collected this hadith that Jabr and Amr said that he heard Jabr say, On the day of Hudaybiyyah, we were 1400 with the Messenger of Allah. 1400 people with the Messenger of Allah. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he looked at them, he said, Antum khayr al-nas fil ard al-yom. Uqam khaw sallallahu alayhi wa You are the best people on the planet earth today. Those 1,400 people. In those days, they had to practice their Islam in secrecy. They wanted so much to practice their Islam. But they had to practice in secrecy. If they were caught, they would be severely persecuted or even killed. Today, we of about 1.8 billion Muslims on the planet Earth. Approximately 25% of the Earth's population. And of that, how many of us pray? We have safety, we have security, and we have money, we have flus, we have homes, we have affluency, but how many of us pray? How many of us pray? La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be sincerely practicing Muslims in word and deed. Amen, amen. As I mentioned at the start of our khutbah, is that to become a person of istiqama. For those of us who are coming in late, we need to strive to be a person, an individual of istiqama. We shouldn't always strive to be a crowd pleaser. Because to be a person of istiqama, it will mean that we are not going to feel comfortable all the time. We have to step outside of our comfort zone. When we're in certain situations, we're going to feel like gharib, huraba, strangeness. We're going to feel strange. And if we don't, if we feel comfortable in every situation, that's an indication that we're not a person of istiqama. To be a person of istiqama requires that we go against societal norms. To be a person of istiqama, it means that we look to those people who gave the bear the Pledge of Allegiance, be a Ridwan, underneath that tree, that 1,400 people who gave the Pledge of Allegiance to die, they had come with the Prophet Sallallahu protecting the Prophet Sallallahu And that small group of people, they took the message, those who survived, took the message to other people. And the whole Arabian Peninsula embraced Islam in a short span of time. And those people took the message to the other people. And the whole known world was exposed to the light of Islam. As we all know, the Prophet is not with us today. 
So we need to make an individual pledge of allegiance within ourselves that we're going to be loyal to Islam and the Muslims. We need to make that pledge when we're called upon to support Islam and the Muslims that we won't hesitate because we look at them as ourselves. We want for our brothers what we want for ourselves. We need to help each other and we need to help the imams of the sunnah. Those people are calling people to the sunnah with Islam, with Iman, with Tawheed. We need to support them. Let me close mentioning another aspect of the pledge in the time of the Prophet Wasallam. In the time of the Prophet Wasallam, the people would give a pledge verbally. The men would shake the hand of the Prophet Wasallam. And the women would give a verbal pledge. The Prophet Wasallam wouldn't shake or touch the hands of the women, but would take their pledge verbally. More examples I want to give. The Sayyid Imam Muslim, Abu Dawood, and the Sayyid, the Auf bin Malik, he said that they gave the pledge of allegiance to the Prophet He said there were about eight, seven, eight, or nine individuals at that time. The Prophet asked him, would you not give me the pledge? He said, we have already given you the pledge, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Aydan, again, give me the pledge again. Give me the pledge of allegiance again. We said, we had already given you. What should we give the pledge? We'll give you the pledge again. They gave the Pledge of Allegiance to the Prophet Wasallam, and he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that you give him the pledge to worship Allah alone and do not associate any partners with him to pray the five times prayer, to hear and obey. And then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said to that seven, eight or nine individuals and to not, and do not ask anyone for anything. Open Malik, he said that these individuals, they took to this pledge so much so that if they were on their riding animal and their whip were to fall off, they would get down. They would dismount, pick up their whip, and go back on their riding animal. So my dear brothers and sisters, man, there are many aspects <coughs> that we need to look at within ourselves and know that Islam <coughs> is not a birthright. We need to practice Islam with ikhlas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those yastamiuna qawl, yastamiuna ahsana. That we hear the speech and we follow the best thereof. Amin, amin, amin. Inna Allah wa malaikatu saluna ana labi. Ya lidina amani. So listen, listen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim. Inna ka amad di majid. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad. ولا إله محمد كما بارك الله إبراهيم ولا إبراهيم إنك عمل مجيد ربنا عاتني في الحسن